Oh my gosh. Yeah. This Bible got to the point, and you know, it was replaced by Sister Jeannie. Thank you so much. And... Who else sent me a Bible? I got another one. Uh, another copy, too. I have a backup. I should have used that here in the truck. And, uh, well, who you know who you are. Thank you very much for that. And uh, the one I've got is the one Barbara Marcotti sent me as a gift some time ago. It is separate from the spine. Why should I marvel, you know? I just have to say it. Verily thou art a God that hide, hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that creates the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it. He has created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret. In the dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness and declare all things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together, you that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that they set up wood of the graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell you and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have I not the Lord? Uh, there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none else besides me. Look unto me. And be saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself... The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. An excerpt from Isaiah 45, which <clears throat> is uh, proof enough that Isaiah had written this about God the Savior. So far back in time, God the Savior, you call upon him, call upon the name Jesus, call upon the name Yeshua, call upon Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, God one, call upon him and he'll save you. Call upon him and he, the truth, he, the truth, he will set you free because he is the truth, the life and the way. Um, the truth is Jesus. Only the Father can draw us to Jesus. The Bible says you can't come to Jesus unless the Father draws you. You're not going to be drawn. Many are not drawn. I've, I've been battling them. Now I need to talk about the return of the dead people. The return of the dead people in dreams is a part of the new attack. And the new attack is simply an old attack, but they make it look like it is without, but it's within. They make it look like the um, the horrors to come are really uh, those that are coming from out there, from the pit of space. Uh, and they're coming into our world. But that's just the visual. You see, all the entities that will be dealt with in terms of aliens are already in existence upon the Earth. There really isn't some... Okay, if you like, if there's an alien invasion, the global crisis that I had written a, uh, a uh, symphony about years ago, 
if that's what you're talking about, the global crisis is here in that they've been here longer than you have. You are the alien. Can you possibly understand that? Yes, it will look like it's coming from space. Yes, they have ships. Yes, they dwell in the heavens that is above earth. You know, that is space. Heavens are space. Yes, they dwell in the heavens. Yes, we haven't been able to access all that because we have slave masters and who trade our souls and who feed off our souls as a commodity to power their engines. And so they give us these uh, phony politicians that um, are meaningless like the Obamas of the world and, the, and the, the Romneys and the this and that and the George Bushes and the Clintons and all the, all the sea of theater that you see is only theater. It's got nothing to do with reality. They are not your leaders. They're simply slaves <clears throat> who are chosen to keep you enslaved and they get paid the money to do that. <clears throat> They've, um, they are the damned. All that are in Washington are called the dead or the damned. The same thing in Hollywood. They're the dead or the damned. They sold their souls for fame, power, fortune, whatever. And um, their reward is the fire of the second death. Every politician you see perishing is going to the lake of fire and the second death. And that's pretty much it across the board. Oh, of course there's the exception. But you see, you don't know yet about what I'm about to tell you. The return of the dead people. So this dead person appears in my dream as part of a very elaborate game of some sort of sabotage, accident, and death that was to be blamed on me or something. As it turns out, then I found her very much alive. I said, why did you participate in this theatrical game? Which to us would be like reality, okay? And she said, do you like the North Pole? And then I said, look, we already won at the cross. We won. It's over. So here she is. A, who She died a few years ago of lupus. She's in the astral plane. This is, uh, her name is uh, Bonnie. She's in the astral plane, thinking she's alive, still playing the game, still doing what she's told. She did not invent it because she doesn't want to go to the North Pole, which means social ostracization, as that's what she means by that. That's a joke. That's being sarcastic on her part. Okay, so, um, you know, there she is, very much alive in the astral plane. And then I saw all around me all the dead, and they were all clamoring for satanic rule, and the same rules are applying in the astral plane as on Earth. And they're very much alive trying to get in here with the promise of their Savior, the aliens, that they will come into the Earth and occupy it once again that they will be resurrected. If they play the game, they are still, the dead are returning in droves. And still, they play the game. And no, they are not deceived and ignorant. No, it isn't, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know exactly what they're doing and did know before they died and continue it even after death. You would have been proud of me because I, you know, basically stood my ground and stated my case for Christ and stated the cross and pled the blood and I did it all. I did it all in their presence and I did not back down or waver one bit because they're just wrong, you know. This was resolved at the cross a long time ago. They lost. They're not going to be resurrected. They're not that. They're deceived. But they're still playing the game and still harassing you as dead people coming into your dreams and into your life and trying to ruin your life. 
So I call it the return of the dead people because uh, this is the first wave of the alien invasion. It's going to be the realm of the dead coming to Earth. That is, while they can't live as spirits where you'd see them, they would have to, yes, occupy various weak individuals and live again that way. And that's being allowed by God. And I don't know why he's allowing it. I suppose this is the big battle of the heavens coming to earth. And the astral plane is as much in the heavens as anything else. So it's the, the, the realm of the dead. The dead are going to occupy all the vessels that should not live in the first place. Not the saints of God. It's not to be concerned with you. But they will be a new force. If you want to call it an alien invasion... By all means, when you say possessed by demons, no, they're not possessed by demons. They're possessed by dead people, and that has begun, and I'm claiming it as a prophetic utterance right now as truth. And, you know, discern it, take it to the Lord, take it to the Papa, ask him if I'm full of you-know-what. And that's the only way you're going to be able to detect it, of course, you'll be keen and sharpened in your own senses to be looking on the lookout for this sort of thing. Um, it's very dangerous. They're very nasty. Um, and they, can they jump from person to person? They can jump from person to person as well. Just exactly behaving as demons behave. They can go from one person to another to another. And so you can't really catch them. But I did catch one. And I was very, I, I wasn't surprised. She looked, um, she was uh, younger, had dark hair. Her cheeks were a bit jowly. You know, but she was just really mean. I mean, death has not be, become her, okay? Death has made her a much meaner. Oh, no, I don't think it was a dream like a fantasy. Oh, absolutely not. No, it was real. Yes. And I'm here to now tell you that it's, you know, this sort of thing is, I'm not the first one to report it, but I mean, I just want to give definition to what, to, to the first wave of, of, uh, total incredible stuff. The first wave is the wave of the dead. Um, the dead are much stronger than animate, than familiar spirits, familiar spirits, like old ancient tree spirits and, you know, ghosts and stuff haunting the earth. They don't have the power because, see, the beast gives them this power. The dragon gives them this power to be able to be animated and, and, and corp, like corporeal, to be, you know, a fully functioning memory, you know, brain, language, all that. Not, not just kind of in and out. No, they're in and that people will literally become another person. They will literally become another... They used to call this in the New Age circles walk-ins, remember? How Prote walked in in uh, K-Pax, played by Kevin Spacey, which was a movie about demonic possession, right? And it dealt with aliens. Oh, wow, gee, what a concept. Wonder where they got that. And um, basically, the, the giveaway was the fact that this Prote guy didn't have a body wherever he came from. He had to possess somebody that was going to give up theirs, you know, or if he had some kind of life form, it was some kind of a, you know, a spiritual form. But he was very good with uh, figuring out where all the stars were and, and how to go from planet to planet and whatnot. But uh, the only way he could have life was he had to possess a person. He had to inhabit a human host. Yes, it was a, a, a good warning about the alien invasion. You see, these entities even genetically engineered and modified us humans so they could easily occupy us at will, which is called conformity. Conformity brings the demon in. Remember, like in Hey Jude, it says, remember to let her under your skin, then you can begin to make it better. Um, and people wondered what that lyric was about. Some people said, oh, it's, well, it's, and then, and then I've seen online, they go, oh, it's, it's about masturbation. It's like, uh, no, 
not not exactly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's about possession. It's about to. Oh well, you can yeah. If you do a sexual ritual to get possessed, it's like voodoo doing a dance to get possessed. It's fine, you know. What does it matter? It's not about masturbation. It's about. It's about um, becoming, uh, coming out into the world, becoming accepted socially by Satan, um, getting the gifts of the spirit of Satan, um, allowing the possession to take hold under your skin, and then living your life like that and reaping life's rewards for being a good, dutiful slave like Paul McCartney who, by the way, is still playing Hey Jude every time. A new batch of young people waving banners and, oh yeah. Yeah, because there's a big demonic force on that song. And the whole point is is to uh, encapsulate, entrain, enslave, force, um, and whatever. You know, force them to um, compliance, which is to let her in and let it let her out let it in and let it out kind of like breathing i breathe out i feed the dragon i breathe in the dragon feeds me yes getting comfortable with that buddy system of existence yes i help you you help me we help each other we get to go to disney world yes we get the pudding yes Uh, what it's all about, yes? Well, anyway, here's what it's all about. Let me just give you uh, the real nitty-gritty of what it's all about. What it's all about, my friends, is they want to occupy you. And that's why I say Hey Jude is a, is a song begging young troubled Jude to not fight the world, but give up and let it in. You see? It. Let it in. Understand? Because then you can begin to thrive. Because then that which made you can occupy you. And then you can begin to make it better, a little better all the time. Yes? What were the Beatles? What was the point? Yes? I've got to shorthand this stuff because uh, by now you should get... No, I feel sorry. I... Saw Sir Paul um, on a Palladium broadcast recently. I gotta get a, a thing in here. I have a little screen, but I don't have it. I love to see that. I, I, I know my daughter really liked to watch that. We love to watch these old bands like Motorhead and stuff. You know, still you know, coming out with their canes and their wheelchairs, still trying to make it work. But um, no, she loves that the music from that era. That's like her favorite thing. Uh, but when Paul McCartney comes out, it, it, it's just bad. You know, it sounds bad. The band is lousy. Um, you know, it doesn't sound like, you know, a lot of these bands, they pretty much will, can play the studio album that they did, that they cut. They can reproduce it today with the technology they have and the skills they've got, obviously. You know, and a lot of them do. But when McCartney came out, it was nowhere near the record, nowhere near the production value. And the band seemed to fumble. Um, in particular, the the uh, the backup band he has is just not. They that backup band has played together with him for years and years and years, but they just aren't. I guess their their hearts and minds are not really into it. They just kind of do an act. But um, you know, it's the same old songs. And they tries to play this little kind of like old upright piano, like they used at Abbey Road. And that sounds lousy. They can't reproduce that sound. And it's it doesn't feel... You know what I mean? It's just kind of a lousy version of Hey Jude. But again, the pinnacle of it all is Hey Jude. What did you say we went to the White House? Hey Jude. Why? Because it's the number one conformianity song of slavery ever written, promoting total satanic slavery and a total selling of your soul to the devil in order to get the rewards and couched in language that is cryptic so people don't get it. And uh, but those that are in it do get it, and uh, it's sort of like low spark of high heeled boys. You know, it's a similar kind of thing. And the whole point of these evangels 
is to evangelize for Satan's side. They're, they're pitching for Satan's side. They're preachers. The, they're, they're doing worship music in Satan's church, which is the concert hall. It's really simple. If you want to make it with them, you have to write lyrics like that. But I couldn't stomach it. I, if I had to write lyrics like... I like to write lyrics against them. Like Albatross. I like to write songs against them and taunting them to a fight because I would like nothing better because in my true spirit, in my heart of hearts, lion heart, I want to kill them all. And I mean without uh, reservation and with extreme prejudice. Uh, no, but, but, you know, that could only happen in the angelic realm, you know. No, I don't mean Paul McCartney. I'm not talking about human beings. I feel sorry for Paul. Paul is simply occupied. He's, there's nobody home. Every once in a while, he gets to be a grumpy old man and he, and, you know, and then he's got to go do something to get back on track. I, um, I feel sorry. I, I'm, I'm in a, in a, uh, right now we are, uh. I think we're in we're in very overcast. It looks like it's going to rain here, Trish. We are in very overcast um, Palm Beach area in a camping area on a lake, just not far from the actual beach. But um, it's really nice. Uh, they can speedboat on the lake. It's a little tiny lake, but they they they're running speedboats out there, and you know pulling people on these little skip sleds things and uh, saw a guy stand up paddling and you know it's really nice but it's really overcast and uh, whatever I, I suppose uh, the real season starts up in, in March I guess but uh, yeah it's a, it's a we landed in a really nice spot and but it's open but the, the Lord told me not to feed the animals you know, the, today he told me very specifically, don't go around talking to the people in their trailers. In other words, don't feed the animals. He indicated that they're all animals. I'm like, oh, really? And no lambs as animals. Understand? No lambs, and it's and it's packed here because I guess it's people are down here for the weather. Although today is horrible. Don't feed the animals means. Um, you know, there's no need to interact. You know, there's no need. What's your husband do? Nothing. We're just a retired. See, we can, at our age now, we can just say, well, we're just retired, wandering around and seeing our grandchildren and, you know, uh, throwing out a line to fish, whatever. Do not feed the animals. Oh, no, they'll, they're, they're, they'll get it all, all. You know, there'll be battles. But, but don't, in other words, don't encourage battles you don't need. Don't feed the animals. Because they're all desperate here. They're just desperate. And um, the amount of drinking I've seen here just puts me to shame. I mean, it really, these people drink me under the table. Little old ladies would drink me under the table here. And so there's that. And, you know, you feel sorry for them. But like I say, we can't feed them because we have a job to do. Part of the job to do is to, to report what I'm seeing. And I just have to say it. Uh, and... Uh, just like I saw deer in the headlights at Walmart in Florida City, in Palm Beach, I see, um, we could call this the city of the possessed. Florida City was the city of um, people just like deer in the headlights. They know something's coming, they don't know what to do, so they go to Walmart. You know what I mean? They'd, it's um, There's a desperation there. Of course, the income strata there, they're poor people. Here, we have kind of, um, well, Palm Beach and especially along Delray Beach. Those houses must be $25 million a piece and up. It's totally insane. The beach clubs, the, 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 the manicured areas, very nice beaches, very nice, but, but you know, wall-to-wall -wall, um, houses. And um, we drove up from Delray Beach to Palm Beach and... Um, Beautiful, you know, uh, building. Oh, there's no shortage of building for the altar. These people are people that have 
these are people I'd say that are in the, the two to five hundred million dollar minimum range of wealth. You know, maybe not complete billionaires, but able to f afford a twenty five million dollar house because that's what they would each cost. And then the very many beach clubs we noticed. And then very little RV parking, you know, obviously there's, uh, there's one beach we have that we know that we're going to go to if the weather clear, clears up that has a, a place for buses and RVs. It's very cool. So, no, no, no. I don't mean all the people are possessed, literally. I'm just saying in the, a swath of the, like... You know how you look at a crowd, you can tell the crowd, well, they're happy, they're sad. It they're, doesn't mean every person in the crowd is going to be the same. But you can get a feel for the crowd, right? Well, that's what I do. You know, I get a feel for the crowd, for the vibe, the thing that's happening. The discerning of spirits. And I can just tell you that, um, in general, in this area we have here called, uh, I guess we're in Lake Worth, which is next to Palm Beach. Uh, we're, we're backed up against a lake and there's a heron. There was like a, a blue heron there yesterday. Now there's just a regular heron just standing there at the lake. Uh, exotic birds. But here's the thing. The, 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 and, and here it's, it, it's similar. They, they don't know what to do. Falling back on old patterns. They don't understand the things that you understand. The things that are happening. And the weaker ones are going to get picked off. I'm not saying they're all picked off right now. I'm not saying they're... Come on, Molly. This is my spot here. This is my spot here. This is not your spot now. Go back on your uh, bunk, Molly. Go back on your bunk. No, you're not going to get up here. See, they, they, there's a sofa in here, and they want the sofa. It's like a big competition. But there's children's bunk beds... In, in the in the back there and they can go get on that no don't get up here this is not where you the, no there's no room no there no come on Eli get off of there sorry Trish I'm trying to communicate with the peeps of what's going on here's here's well, we got dogs going on that's for sure well I know but I that they can go back on the bunk bed or they can jump on the bed back in the back they don't need to be in my office Okay, I gotta calm down. Look, here's the thing. Why would I want to um, destroy them with with vengeance? I'm talking about destroying the entire Satanic Kingdom, including all any rebellion toward God whatsoever. And I like to slain in myself too. I don't want to see it. I want to see perfect fidelity with God. Period. I do not want to see rebellion. I don't want to see sin, but sin is what created this physical world in a, in a way. It's, it's the most strange thing in the world. The 3D world is really the prison world. The spiritual world is the freedom world. And we're taught that this is the real world, and they're actually trying to live here, possess us, manipulate us, and take over, but keeping us in prison while they possess us so that they can have a life, us being simple hosts that they create so they can, as parasites, live and take over. The alien invasion is within as much as without. It has begun with the repatriation of dead people into other weaker hosts that they are taking over the first wave. This is the return of the dead people. The return of the dead, folks. It's the return of the dead, I'm telling you. One thing I've always had is the ability to see the dead, that they're, they're in a certain place. Always been able to see that and communicate with, and I resist it. But now we have to draw a line in the sand because they're coming after me. And they're coming after me because I am the opposition, because they know that I will scream about the dead living again. And the dead are looking for, um, they're looking for fit extensions, if you will. They are looking for people to possess right now. They weren't two weeks ago. 
They weren't a month ago. They weren't two, five, seven, eight, ten, twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand years ago. They are today. They're being let out. So I'm warning you that that's going on first off, right, first front and center off the bat. Not just because of my own one experience, because I got the Rima uh, upon interpretation of the nightmare reality I was in and to get the interpretation from the Lord Father God as to what it is that's going on and there will be, you know, dancing in the sky and lights and all that kind of Disneyland stuff to follow. The global crisis is begun. And I came to Earth to begin my work in the same way they're beginning their work. I told them that you lost at the cross a long time ago. Give it up. They laughed at me. They, <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> it was that sort of reaction. So here we are. We're going to prove that the cross was it. And the cross is where to make your stand. And that's what it's all about. It's not about Jude. It's about Jesus. It's not about Paul McCartney and his, you know, sorry possessed uh, carcass. It's about Jesus. Well, just like voodoo people, you know, the um, rock and rollers want to be possessed by the most powerful entities because then they write the most profound songs. And, um, you know, but they're all glorifying the dead. You know, and the dead will, you'll see McCartney become feeble now. You'll see him become like a, some sort of senile old guy. You know, it's, that's the, that's what happens. But, and that's what can happen to a guy like that who is possessed beyond belief. But what did he expect? You see, they didn't come for payment until now. Now they'll take a guy like that and they'll just jump in He'll be put into a little room somewhere within his vessel, held hostage by entities who are going to do what they want to do. And, um, you know, that time of that has, is here. The dead are being let out to possess the living. Does that mean Satan is let out? Well, I suppose it does. Do you think you're going to have a news article that uh, Satan is loosed upon the earth uh, to wreak havoc and destruction so God can finally put an end to this thing once and for all? Um, anyway, so there I am kind of talking tribulationally, right, about Bible prophecy. And um, now my thing is that I've, I've pinned the apocalypse on one event, the birth of the man-child. I think that is the apocalypse. I think that is really, you know, kind of like the precursor of the New Jerusalem and the rest of it. I think that's the apocalypse. I think in the midst of all the judgments and all the thunders and vials and jars and whatever is being thrown at humanity and a third of the sea and the fish and the life and people and whatnot uh, and, and, and scorching the earth and scorpions and all these horrors that come to the earth, um, you've got this birth of the man-child against all odds. So frightening an event is that that uh, a third of the angels are drawn um, by the dragon to go into total battle with this thing, the man-child that is totally protected and um, as you and I are protected. So I, I see the birth of the man-child despite all odds against it, despite thousands of years of doing everything they could possibly do to prevent the man-child from being born. For thousands of years, it did not work. So as you have the dead being released, you have the man-child being released. So I can confirm, in a sense, uh, Brother Roger is talking about the man-child. And um, I may not see it the way he sees it, but it, the, the thing is, is he, he sees it as now. Um, uh, Jonathan Kleck sees the alien invasion kind of thing as, as, a, as a beginning of, of now, of this horrible uh, tribulation, this takeover, this, this uh, 
Satan being loosed upon the earth and therefore believes, I think he believes, I don't know exactly what he believes, but others believe that, they're, that Yahweh will protect and, and take us out. I am saying that in the midst of all that, Yahweh protects. I'm protected right now and the, and the dead are trying to possess the living. My job is to, to report this corner of the thing that the dead are, don't feed the animals and the dead are, because the, you know, they're possessed. By feed the animals, it's like, don't give them extra ammunition for them to shoot you in the head. I mean, is that so hard to, to, to understand? You can't just go out in the world and just be whatever you want and do whatever you want. That's just not the way it's going to work. Because it's not, you weren't born in Disneyland. It's not fantasy land. You know, there's a battle on, you're behind enemy lines, you don't feed the animals. Can't you understand that particular obedience thing? Do you have to go out and tell everyone everything about your life? Do you owe it to them to report to them who you are, what you do, where you came from, what you believe? Absolutely not. There's no reason for you to give them any of that information whatsoever. I can see some of you still are. You don't owe them anything, okay? Especially if they're on the other side, then they're just scum. Got me? I mean, you can pray over their souls that they would wake up and repent, but most of them, let me, I, I don't think you quite understand. Most of these people know exactly what they have let in. And they're, they're not only okay with it, they're promoting it as evangels. You, they want dead. You don't owe them an explanation for your life. They ask me what I do, I just say, F off. You know, mind your own business. Sure, I get a reputation as grumpy, mean Z, but that's just, so what? You know, this is a battle. You know, it's, it's not, I am a nice guy most of the time, but around them, I don't feel like being a nice guy. And I don't feel like I owe them any, but you know what, I went my whole life giving them everything in the hopes that would, they would change them. You know, just, here's my neck. You want to cut my neck? You want to kill me? Well, if it will save your soul, I'll let you kill me. Well, I still believe that. I mean, I still want to sacrifice myself for others. But the point is, you know, I mean, if, if, it, if my life could be so a child could live, then maybe my life would be a cheap price for that child to live. I mean, you know, I believe that. I, I fully believe Jesus taught me that. But, you know, at the same time, he said, be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. And, and you know, wise as serpents mean... You don't go out and do what they won't do. They won't give you any information. You go, what do you do? Oh, nothing. What do I do? Now I'm looking at the heron. What are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm glad you're having a nice little life. Uh, congratulations. Maybe you should go have another drink and watch some more direct TV. I mean, you know, it's, it's, maybe you should just go count the... Uh, um, what else do you do around here? Have your bratty kids run around and throw mud at each other. You know, whatever. Go, go to uh, the store. Come back. Put a, get a bonfire. Uh, what? It, what? I don't know what they do. Right now, you and I are talking about this. This is more important than what they're doing. The reason it's important is because this affects the whole world, and I'm speaking to the whole world, and this involves the whole world, and this involves what's going to happen next. And I can tell you this, um, I'm not surprised to have the rise of communications being interrupted by, quote, alien stuff. It's also from the realm of the dead or electronics in general. And remember this, the sun has been completely out of control. So a lot of your cell phones and things will go out and you will have weird breakups and different kinds of sounds going on. But breaking up is, is a function of the sun flares, which have been... Um, crazed. And uh, don't forget that as another aspect of this cosmic scourge. And what's it all about? It's to separate the sheep and the goats. Last night, yours truly did a great job. I took it to them for the cross, for Jesus, for the shed blood. I stuck it to them. I stuck to my guns. I put it in their face. 
despite being completely surrounded by them all. And, you know, in other dreams, I've been, I've kind of been afraid and different, you know, but no, no, I came into my own in that dream last night. It wasn't a dream. I don't even know what it was. It was like as real as we're talking right now, I suppose. Bonnie, what an idiot. What an absolute idiot. Here she is dead. I guess she, she doesn't know she's dead. But defending, like she thinks she's going to be socially ostracized. There is no social life for her. She's dead. She's just looking and hoping that they'll give her a slot to jump into some little girl somewhere so she can have another life. And that's why people are being broken down and traumatized so they can be taken over. Not necessarily by demons, but by the dead. Which is also a... I'm here to tell you that the ceremony of the rising of the dead was held somewhere in Europe by witches, by practitioners and sorcerers. And they've conjured this whole thing and it's also tied in with all the pyramids and the obelisks and all that to go ahead and, and have this event. So I, I guess they're getting ready for World War III, IV, whatever. They're getting ready to tear it up, baby. They're getting ready to really put the hammer down and to create mass death for their sacrifice. There are no one-to-one -one assignments, are there? Meaning you're a dead person, you get a dead, you get a living person that's weak and you take over like a walk-in and then that's your life until you get blown up by a nuke or whatever. I mean, is that, right? We got the nuke thing, we got World War Three. you know, Iran hit, economy out the window, riot to the streets, occupy, burn down the house, uh, invasion USA, literal invasion, killing all the Americans. What else? Alien invasion, blah, 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 blah. We all need to come together to fight the alien. Um, sounds to me like one big turd sandwich, you know. All of it. From one end to the other. Nothing but pain, and pain is all you're going to get. And there isn't going to be anything else. The pain of seeing your children die. The pain of seeing yourself die. The pain of seeing everything you hope for die. The pain of seeing people turning evil. The pain of people turning each other in. The pain of people turning on one another who used to love one another. The pain of, of, of no love, no light, no help. Nothing but, but cruelty. Um, the pain of uh, the, the, the mighty, you know, the, the, the mighty men with the guns running amok and taking over and putting everyone else in concentration camps. I mean, you know, they're, they're, that's what's kind of on the docket. Okay, the alien invasion. All right, the Great Tribulation. Okay, fine, war without end. Okay, earth changes, sun changes, vials of, you know, fish and sea and, you know, life dying and animals dying and trees dying and things dying, death everywhere. To where people are going to envy the dead. And that's the promise of sin. And that's the, 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 the generation after generation after generation of sin and witchcraft and sorcery has brought us to this point of pure failure on every front by them who put themselves up at the top, who don't deserve to run a lemonade stand. They would just use that to poison people. They are poison. And there's only one thing to do with them. What do you do with garbage? Doesn't matter if it's in a human form or not. You take it out. That's exactly what Yahweh is going to do. He's just going to take out the trash. I don't worry because I belong to him. He's my God. He's my father. He's my friend. He is me in a sense because he created me and he's with me and within me. He's within every cell of my body. He's within every corpuscle, every capillary, every everything about me he is and, and he's, you know, gonna make justice for me. He died for me. He'll do anything for me so that it will come out okay in the end so long as I love him and 
and look up to him and treat him as the authority, number one, numero uno, in my life, then I get to go with him. And that's exactly where I'm going to go. And nothing is going to stop me from going with him, especially not these clowns running around on this joke planet doing the joke things they do. Well, the planet's not a joke. The planet's beautiful, but they make it. They, their systems are a joke. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, no, I did an audio last week. I should have gotten you another audio, but I didn't. And the audio was something like, you know, I, I basically said a few things that could have gotten me a knock on the door, so I, I can't say them because we're heavily censored here now. You might have noticed we're censoring ourselves, but you and I are now the fulfillment of what I said in 2008. Interestingly, we're in a 2008 motorhome. <laughs> yep. Got the last workhorse before they discontinued it with... Oh, because they couldn't live up to the emission standards of the new regulations of the Obama administration. So they discontinued probably the most successful um, V8 motor ever made, the workhorse. 8.1 Vortec. And yes, Rick, it uh, chews up gas like you know nothing, but it, it, uh, it's not that bad, actually. But what it really does well is it just goes up and down the hills and goes wherever you want it to go and... And does a great job, but you know it has a Allison transmission, which is a, as you know, a truck transmission, and it's kind of there's kind of a weird thing going on with it right now. But it's also I think there's still a warranty because there's no miles in this thing. But you know it's a little older and a little more you know it doesn't look as as new as what's out there today, and that's good. That's a good thing because it's it's the best of what was before the end. What they have now. I'm surprised they can even get there. I guess you have to have a diesel, a big diesel. Uh, if I was going to make a bus, seriously, like a, like, a, like a musician's bus or something for a band, I would have a 1,000 horsepower. Two, I would put two diesel engines in it, 500 horsepower each. One for each part, <laughs> and both of them uh, hooked up in, uh, in sync to, to, to turn that... Uh, the uh, rear axle. I would have uh, um, two, two, uh, one dually and two, two individual wheels. I'd have three axles in the back and one in the front, and have it be like fifty feet long. And uh, I don't know where you drive it, but I'd say that would be, you know, uh, and I'd make it look like um, a car, like a Batmobile. You know what I mean? It would be like a like everything would be round and kind of like you know the the vehicles in Batman. I'd have it be like a vehicle out of Batman with like huge Mickey Thompson slick tires, you know, in the back that are like, you know, then have the individual ones lined up. You know, um, I would go crazy. I'm glad I'm not in this business. <laughs> we have what I would call kind of a glorified hippie van, you know, and um, Sort of like a lost in America van, you know. It's just it's not quite as big as the others, and it's sort of, kind of, you know, it's a gas, not a diesel. Engines in the front, not the back, but it's really pretty cool. It's it's getting us around. It's 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 meeting our needs exactly. Anything less wouldn't have done it. More would have been fine, but then it would have been more. You know, we couldn't afford that. So, it's meeting our needs of of whatever Yahweh wants me to do. I have no idea. I'll just say this, he's put me out here in America surveying the land. I am here at the uh, good cross-section of Americans. And most of these people are conservative, you know, patriot. They have American flags and all that. And uh, some are God-fearing and, and, and all. But in general, there's, there's a malaise, you know, across the land. Whether you're in Galveston uh, Island, whether we're in, uh, you know, whether we're in... Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, whether we're in, um, you know, Alabama, Gulf Shores, Alabama, whether we're in um, uh, Sebastian um, and then all the nice beaches of, of Florida from, from the northern, from the mid part all the way up, it seems that it's just people holding their breath. But here's the problem. I gotta stop talking. You know, I diminish the word because I gave the word. 
this is the return of the dead. They can jump from one to another, but tend not to. There were rituals done to open certain portals for this to occur. They don't understand that God wanted it to occur at this time as part of a judgment. So what they were doing for themselves wound up to be perfectly God's will because every witch and warlock is a slave because they can only do what they were scripted to do from the beginning and they have never done anything that is not really in Yahweh's will ultimately, even if it's seen as rebellion. It is not rebellion. It fits perfectly in the whole tapestry of the reality of the, of the work that Yahweh is doing, which is good and love and beautiful and perfect and lovely and awesome and amazing. You're not going out there, Eli, so knock it off. The dogs really want to get out. Now that people are stirring and the kids are going, Eli, you're not getting out there. Yeah, it's a constant. Well, we have a dog park. We found a dog park nearby. And, um, you know, that's where they can go and run and run and just run it out. Dogs are not allowed on the beach in Florida. I don't know if people, maybe nobody told me that. In California, it's more and more that way. The only place you can really run dogs is out of Galveston Island. They don't care down in Texas. You just run the dogs. You would run your vehicles, too, for that matter. I know in the Carolinas, you could run the vehicles. on. I think uh, also Daytona Beach, you could run a vehicle. But still, I don't think they... I'm not sure what the deal is with dogs at Daytona Beach. I don't know. But, you know, we, we the, the survey I have is... It's not that everyone's demon-possessed. It's that everyone is ripe. If they don't have a strong faith, if they don't believe in God's word of the Bible, you know, which we, we take that when we start speaking the word of truth in the Bible, I mean, everything else stops. You know, that's where it's at. Trish named the, the, the bus, it's called like a fiesta because it was kind of like a, a more economical version of, of a bus type thing. But it's, you know, that's such a lame name um, because it's just lame. Really looks stupid too, but uh, she called it the apocalypse. So I think that's what I'm going to have to name it. Uh, you know, just apocalypse on the back. You know, how you have a boat. It's like a boat. You have a boat. You put on. They have like a name. The name of this boat is apocalypse, and that's exactly what is happening. We are broadcasting the apocalypse. I cannot stress, even though I've wandered and meandered a bit here. Sorry for that. But I cannot stress enough uh, the need for you to be girded up every day, full spiritual armor on at all times, because when these people are possessed by the dead, the dead are coming also with knowledge of who, holy cow, the dead are coming with assignments and kill orders to kill you. They know your name. They know your lang they can speak other languages. They know your language. They know your birth date. They know where you work. They know everything about you. And they're coming, you know, to a theater or drive in near you. And yes, they'll they'll speak out of one person's mouth and then jump to another. Very similar to what's going on now with the demons, but it's different. It's more personal, more in your face, because these are familiar people. These are people that you knew that died who are coming back to get you, who want to take you to the realm of the dead. That's exactly what's going on. And the weak are just not going to make it. Once they have the sheen, they're gone. Once they have the sheen, they're gone. I, Lord Yahweh, will never accept the sheen. I will not accept you. Go over there. I cut you off forever. It's not just sin. It's death of soul. It's permanent death, second death, endless death, gone as if you never were type death. There's a threshold that can be crossed. Yes, they know exactly what they do, and they do it, and they defend it. You see, someone like Bonnie will never be able to... Uh, 
understand the astral realm is not Earth. It's not, you know what I mean? She's trapped there until the Lord just decides to extinguish everyone that's there, you know, as if they never were. You know, um, but she lives, she's living on. Yep. I remember my grandfather was there. There are other people there I ran. My father was there. All these people from, uh, you know, I've seen Indians there. I've seen all kinds of people there. When I, when I, but when I've been shown it, I don't go looking for it because it's very heavily forbidden in El Bible, but it's just common sense forbidden. You just don't, you don't seek the dead. You don't seek the dead. The dead want to live, okay? The dead don't even believe they're dead. The dev, dead believe that they deserve to have your carcass, your body, for themselves because they want to live again. So if they can take it, steal it from you, they're going to do it. Anyway, they're coming here for one purpose, and that is to establish Satan's kingdom and to promote that because they're, they're wills, there's nobody there in that astral plane that doesn't know what they believe. They know what they believe. They promote what they believe. They are not deceived. They know exactly what they're getting. They may be deceived ultimately, thinking they're going to win when they're not. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll grant you that one. They don't know that the war is over. They already lost. They don't know that. That they don't know. So they're deceived in that way. But they in they like who they are in Satan. They love themselves in the astral plane. They want to make everything conform to that. They have been released to the earth. So of the sun flares, um, everyone's looking up for the alien thing. Uh, I think you, you must understand the alien thing is as much the crisis of the globe. We are in a global crisis now. It's within. The alien invasion is really within. While you're looking at all the lights of the sky, what happens within us is really the thing that is the invasion, right? Invading us. They're not coming here to invade the trees. They're not coming here to invade empty cities. They're not coming here to invade the desert. They're not coming here like to, to take over the inner earth. They're coming here to invade human is the turf, is the territory. The invasion, therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, is within, isn't it? I mean, ergo sum, right? Law of deduction, it's within. That's how they can live. Yes, they have ships and, 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 and Disneyland on steroids will be available, but so does Yahweh have ships and Disneyland on steroids available, and, and it's all going to be playing out in every level. Every single thing, here's what I'm here to tell you, and I'm going to finish, and I promise. Everything is available. Everything is happening. All the scenarios are valid. Whether you're at the alien invasion part, Yahweh will protect you, whether you believe in translation, bubble protection, or the catching away. Really, I don't see that much difference. I mean, I see it as semantics. Catching away, what's that mean? Location means nothing to me, so I don't look at location. Will Yahweh protect me? Of course he will. Even if I die, am I protected? Of course I am. So what's the point? What's, what's the big deal? Right? I'm at peace with that. I, some have this, they just want, they, look, they're just obsessed with being caught away on, on some sort of, you know, physical 3D, something they can understand in their minds today and taken from here to there. And so maybe the Lord will grant them that so they can be satisfied that, you know, then they're going to be shown how much more awesome Yahweh, how much, how much the real thing is so much more. It's unfathomable. Uh, the translation is occurring on a minute by minute basis to all of us. All the time, adjustments are being made, like the Adjustment Bureau, front, back, center, back in your past, adjustments are being made to give you a different outcome in the future. All kinds of things like that are going on. It's mind-boggling. It's so far beyond our comprehension. That's why it's like, let them have the rapture thing. That's fine. But it's so much more profound than the way it's, you know, presented. 
right? Put it this way. I'm protected. I'm raptured. I'm translated. I'm healed. I'm one with Yahweh. What more do I need? But but we get, we're going to go through all these scenarios. Um, my scenario is to warn you about the uh, the return of the dead. Yes, return of the not quite living, return of the dead dead. Return of the astral dead. Yep, they're back, and the aliens have been here. Like the alien, the joke about the aliens is the aliens were here before we were here. So um, we're the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's all semantics. We have to have some way we can communicate with each other. So we need certain concepts. But I mean, I think the point is, is everyone's excited about the extremes in the universe. And they know it can't go on much longer. And, and people know that they're going to die. You know, have it kind of, people kind of understand there could be a sudden death thing out of the blue, you know. And there's a, like a preparation for that. And there's a lot of fear, a lot of hope. A lot of tears, a lot of sorrow, a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth. And there's just on every level of spectrum, everything is in extremes right now. God help you, really. God help me. I don't see how we get through it. If you're sensitive like I am, I'm a sensitive. I'm, a, I'm an empath. And I just, holy, oh God. The kind of pain I feel in people's spirits right now, oh my God. Even if they're evil, your heart still goes out to them. It's like, oh man, you're in such pain. I guess you need a dead person to take you over to give you hope in the future that you're going to have your new world order. (laughs) Because let me explain something. Yeah, they'll get a new world order, but no one will want it. No one. The living will envy the dead. That's their new world order. God help us. I pray in the name of Jesus that every single one of you and every single one of me that we all come together as one under the banner of Jesus, Yahweh, Yeshua, the one, John 17, the brethren, the 144, however you want to label it, that we come together, Lord, I pray you seal us all with the translation seal of the new Jerusalem of your name, Yahweh, in the name of Jesus. I look forward to this. I like being back where I was. Lord, I'm sure that all who are listening feel a sense of wanting to be back where they were, even though there is no back. I recognize that. Lord, I recognize you, Yahweh, Jesus, Elohim, one, Jah, as the one true life, the one true truth, the one real reality, the one true God, the one, the only one who can help each and every one of us, your lambs, Lord, I pray you protect, provide, and give to your lambs everything that they need worldwide, right now, this day, Especially hope, especially joy, especially provision, and all the things they need so they can worship, glorify, talk about you to keep you front and center in their consciousness all at all times in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray you total blessing. Shalom, shalom. Zef Daniel on the road. Lake Worth, Florida, out for now. We'll see you next time.